all right guys so before i even let you guys watch the video just be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe i'm trying to get to 2k subscribers so if you are watching it and you are not subscribed be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the bs gang we would love to have you but i'm gonna stop right here i'm not gonna take up any more of your time so hopefully you enjoy this demon tier list video all right so now that Assault Mode Meliodas has finally been added to the game, his passive, which only works for uh, demons or those with commandments, has really been like the hot topic, right? Whether it's too restrictive or not. But the demons are actually really good. And so I wanted to make a tier list of the demons within the game. Obviously, with every tier list, there's uh, people at the very bottom and there's, you know, people at the very top. But um, the demons are still good. They are very, very good. And a lot of people think that because he is restricted to demons, it's pretty bad. And I'd argue it's actually really good. It gives a little bit more um, variety in PvP rather than just seeing Assault Mode, Melee the One, Goddess Elizabeth, Lost Vein, right, and Festival King. You can actually make uh, a good team of demons. And in the, you know, obviously the SST, the gods here, you have Assault Melee, you have Lost Fame Meliodas, and you have Red Zeldris. So this tier list is basically going to be going over all of the demons or people or those with commandments, right? And I've basically just put them all within the tier and where they place in the game currently. So that way you have an easier time of figuring out who you want to put in your slot, yada, yada, yada. But um, with that said... I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get into the video. So you guys already see the entire, like, uh, you know, tier list, right? So obviously you already know these three right here. Now these three are actually really insane. Red Zeldris to this day is crazy. Um, he has much more viability now because of Assault Mameliota. So if you put him, Red Zeldris, and um, like Blue Droll, very, very good team. His passive works with commandments. So you have commandments and your enemies have commandments you're basically giving yourself a i believe it's like 24 percent increase right if you just have two commandments on this on the side right i'm not sure if it works for subs if it still like accounts if they're in the sub slot if it does that's really really crazy but considering you only have zero and zelders on your team and if the other team is running two commandments you're basically giving yourself a 24 percent increase to basic stats which is insane because you guys already know Assault Mode Meliodas works off of that. He also increases his basic stats every time an ally takes a hit. Um, stackable up to 25%. So very, very good. Lost Vein, both of these are fest units. You already know two fest units are, the, you know, the top, the cream of the crop, right? God tier demons. Now Lost Vein, hit him. You basically screw yourself over. You hit him, you're basically screwing yourself over. So it's like... <laughs> they're they're really good let's just say that they're really good and zelders is up here with them because he's a good supporter not only is he top tier demon he's also just very very good so um yeah these three right here god tier now it becomes a little bit more iffy when you like when you move down the list right so when you place these like these six in s spot it becomes very tricky so this is the s spot very useful or very or valuable to team compositions so Blue Zeldris, although he may not be on the level of Red Zell, if you make a team based around Blue Zeldris, he is going to look nutty. He's actually going to look nutty. He's very, very good. Don't get it twisted. This this, this boy right here, this bad boy, King Zell, can hit very, very hard. When you set up his team right, he can be one of the best units in the game. So don't get it twisted. He's still very, very useful, right? You just have to make a team based around him. Um... Derriere is the same way. She's very useful in PvE content. She also sort of can be used in uh, PvP, but uh, nowadays people just run very, very good blue units. So um, she doesn't really have a place there, in all honesty. But PvE, she's still very good. She can be used in story mode. She can be used in guild boss. She can be used in final bosses. She can be used in uh, raids, the, or more specifically, the Demon Halix raid. She can be used in all areas of content, to be honest with you. Uh, except where, you know, basically they just remove your buffs all the time. But otherwise, she's very, very useful in all areas of content. Daria is still a very top tier demon. Esterosa, same way. Esterosa, though, can be used in uh, PvP. You could run him 
with Assault Mode Melee, but I don't know if that'd be the most, like, viable setup, but you can if you really wanted to. They also have his uh, full counter, right, which is very, very good. You guys already know how good um, full counter is. I don't even have to tell you guys how good that is. He's just a very good unit, plus his passive actually works on the back. Keep that in mind. I did not know his passive worked on the back. I think I watched uh, Nag's video on it. Bro, his passive works on the back. So that means you can have someone in the front, like on the front lines who uses stance and it'll activate. It's crazy. So very, very good. Red Melascula, or Melascula, my apologies, right? <laughs> she is still very, very good too. She's very useful. You could, I, I, I'm hearing that she's actually more useful than Gloxinia, which is very crazy. So that's why I put her in S tier because if she can be used with Melee, She's very, very good. She's also a very top tier demon in the game. <laughs> also, right? She prevents people from dying. If you don't use a skill, she ignites you, which can combo with a lot of amazing units. Very, very good. She has, I believe her card is blaze damage. So her skill one inflicts blaze damage. She can self-inflict that. She has amazing life still. All around good, good unit. Very, very uh, useful. And then you have both of these drolls. I couldn't decide which one to put in a tier so i just went ahead and put both of them in s tier they're they're both very very useful green droll cucks uh goddess elizabeth and those who use basically buff and debuff skills um he also has a detonate card which is very strong can uh, disable ultimate moves once they get it very very good unit then blue droll same way blue droll finds himself to be a very viable unit within the meta nowadays especially alongside <clears throat> the best unit in the game so he can use his taunt which you know obviously they can't attack anyone but him he can become immune to petrify which is very very good he can petrify again very very good and then his passive is good as well for every buff on him he increases allies attack by three percent again working with him this is very very good so both of their passive skills combined with assault melee makes him monstrous monstrous unit god tier this is why he's in uh the ss cuts this is crazy so yes again if you also run his commandment again he's viable he can make assault melee look just like jesus incarnate it's crazy it's actually crazy so these guys right all of them ss and s tier very very good units obviously s tier is like you know you can't beat them but the all of them here you can run without a problem on the demon team and you can just run in general with various team compositions too. Maybe not Assault Mode Melee because you won't get his passive. But if you find yourself using him with other units, uh, d do let me know, right? So now here's where it gets a little, um, like, it, it'll probably get a little bit, um, what am I what am I looking for? What's the word? Uh, just opinionated, right? You get very opinionated right here. So A tier can be useful, but is replaceable. Now, again, I'm not saying they're like, you know, they can never be used. They are usable. They can be useful, but there's obviously better replacements. Blue Demon Meliodas within this uh, Demon tier list. He is good, but his real, his only real team is the Pierce Comp. That's the only thing that hurts him. Again, he's useful for PvE, but he can definitely be replaced, especially nowadays because he's just like, he's falling off a little bit, but Pierce team itself is still very, very strong. It actually is pretty good against... Um, the demon team itself because they don't have fairy king right they don't have valenti to reduce pierce rate so if you run a pierce team against assault melee red zell and blue droll you are going to find yourself doing some good good damage the only problem is if droll has his resistance buff it could be a little bit of an issue but not too much for you to like completely worry about so again very useful but it's replaceable blue Mel uh melascula same thing she's useful but she can be replaceable on uh any team within you know the game she's not very very crazy but again she is the counterpart to red uh, melascula and she has very good life stealing pretty overall decent sub stats so there you go uh green mon speed crazy good if you have ignites like a person who ignites or ignites you could even run him with any of the melasculas or keo so again very useful but he is replaceable there's just many better options of greens especially since uh yeah, so, but you can run him with different teams. That's his uh, strong point as well, right? You could argue you could run him with different teams. So that's where he just uh, excels in some of these areas other with um, rather than any of these other units. Red Galaxinia is good. 
he is useful now because he exists. You can run him with Assault Melee. To be honest, you can run him with most units. The problem is he his skills are a little... I want to say they're not the greatest, right? His healing skill is good. His recovery skill is really good because it just removes debuffs. But if you get, you know, recovery disabled, he's not really doing much because his skills are pretty weak. Here, let me go, right? Let's go ahead and look up Gloxinia right now. So, Gloxinia is, again, oh, he's not a demon. What am I doing? He is all of them. So, Gloxinia, right? Red Gloxinia. Again, not the, the the worst unit but could be better he did just get buffed though he did did get buffed um so his stats these are not again these are not his updated stats so he did get buffed but again if you get sealed here like recovery sealed his first skill isn't the craziest in terms of damage 120 120 very very low he uh has a debuff called blockade which only allows him to use rank one skills but if they cleanse it it's pretty much gg and then his um his passive is good as well. He can basically get double the orbs. But aside from that, nothing too crazy or were like you know what I mean? Like nothing too crazy or nothing to write home about. So can be useful, but is easily replaceable in my opinion. So that's all of them in A tier. Um uh, when it comes to B tier, they, they can be good, right? They can be good and or useful for their passive skill. So Everyone in B's here, are, they still are good. They're just not great. You know what I mean? Blue, obviously, Blue Fraudrin. You you guys only really use him for his passive, so there's nothing more to say about him. Then you got Green Demon Meliodas. Again, passive is very, very top tier, actually. If you kill and then they have full alt gauge, you just steal it and can you, you can basically get off two ultimates in a row, which is, like, insanity. But... Other than that, his skills aren't the craziest. I mean, he has good crit chance and crit damage, but like if we go over like his um his first skill, right? His first skill basically just seals and it's a single hitting target, not the craziest. Then his second skill is an AoE, but it does infect. And that's not really the craziest. It just basically disables any type of recovery. But if they have a cleanse, they can just cleanse it off of them. You know what I mean? So again, can be good, but just you know just really used for his passive um green derriere same thing her passive is that you can't gain skills i believe by combining cards which is useful when in conjunction with either of the mon speeds that's really it but she's good because she depletes orbs and she can fill her alt gauge now the fact that she has amplify on her ultimate is not really that good she has no way of proccing her amplify. That's the problem, right? So she has no way of proccing her amplify. Like what? What are you gonna? How are you gonna get it off? Unless you run her with draw or someone who basically buffs. You know what I mean? Basically buffs her. She's not getting her amplify off, which is pretty useless. But most of the time, people only run her for defensive purposes because of her commandment reducing ranged attacks by thirty five percent. Very very good in terms of defensive teams. But other than that, not really that crazy. Um, Fraudrin. Fraudrin, even with, like, well now, just isn't the craziest unit. Like, he really isn't. More units that are coming out have higher CC, right? They just naturally have higher CC. So, even if you well out on him, even, like, the most I've seen him is, like, at 52, maybe 53k. Some units are now at 40, uh, or 54, 55k-ish. So, you're not really gonna get more, like, much value out of him. Plus, his passive is kind of outdated. I mean, yeah, disabling, you know, the, the alt gauge is really good. But is it really that good when there's so many red units now, especially the Sensario exists? Um, you know, just a couple of amazing units, the one, uh, Assault Melee. There's just really good units now that just counter him. Ladocio even, right? Ladocio even counters him really, uh, really good if he outsees his fraud run. So... He's good and can be useful for his passive, but it's very rare. I mean, he is good, though. I believe in Brawl, so there you go. Both of these both of these guys are good in Brawl, so there you go if you play that. Red um, Meliodas. Um, I'm a little iffy. I was going to put him in A tier, which I, I think you could make a case. I think you can still move it, right? I think you could make a case for him being in A tier, but 
most of the time i don't really see him ran unless someone's showcasing him in which that case you're putting him with a good team you know what i mean but most times you're not gonna just sit here and say oh i'm definitely running red demon meliodas i have to have him on my team you know what i mean he he has a good passive if any of his allies die he increases his crit chance by 50 percent, which is good but you really don't want him to be like the last person on the field or you just don't want your teammates to die in general you know what i mean so he's in b uh b tier which um for me he is at least i can see you again i can see you making a case for him being uh useful but it's replaceable um maybe i'll leave him here maybe i will leave him here maybe i'm being a little too harsh on him he's still very good both of his cards are debuff cards so if you get attack sealed it won't matter so maybe i am being a little too hard on him i'll, I'll leave him up there you guys let me know right so c tier um, these these units are pretty bad. There's no real use for them in the game or in the current meta. Yes, Hendrickson is considered a demon in the game. Yes, he is considered a demon, which is why he's here, right? Bellion, he's not um he's not good. <laughs> I'll be honest, he's not really that good. He has outdated skills. He has an or like he he can deplete orbs. He has an ult depletion card, but what what's the point of him having that when like literally derriere is probably a better option red zell's definitely a better option there's just many units in the game that do it better than him in general i just don't really see people really using him for anything like i'm gonna be honest with you not even in pve i mean if you guys find out where he could be useful let me know i'm sure he'll be useful somewhere but just in general just really bad like he's not really that good it, it, like just no use in the game right now maybe in the future a unit will come out which helps him but mm -mm, definitely not that great his ultimate has no effect on it it's literally just an ultimate card and then his skill one uses shatter which eh, like, like it's not really that great and then you have uh blue <laughs> blue sr meliotis need i say more although he does have weakness and a full counter He's just an SR, which is, yeah, so there you go. Gallon, no, not even Gallon, right? He has Amplify on his skill one. He can self-proc it if he gets his ultimate off, but that's really only when he gets his ult off. He does have, a, you know, obviously a commandment, which counters uh, Gother, but it's like, eh, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's just a lot of better blue units in the game. Plus, in terms of like blue units, you you have all these other better options than Gallon and the Demon. You know what I mean? Like just in terms of demons, so really not that crazy. Really not that crazy. Green Hendrickson, legit only for King. Legit only useful with King. Um, yeah, that that's really it. No no real place for him in the game at all. Red Estorosa, I was really debating on putting him up here, but his passive sucks. He needs to be debuffed in order for his passive to go off, which is a really, really bad condition. Like, that's actually really bad. He does have Code Destruction, which can be good, right, with someone who puts debuffs. Keo, right? But Keo just does it far better. You can put him with Keo, but he doesn't really have anything else. He can disable recovery skills, which can come in clutch. But other than that, nothing to write home about. He... I mean, yeah, just no real place for him in the meta right now. Plus, the one Escanor will literally body sl like body slam him to the ground. There's a goddess Elizabeth who can hard counter him. He's just not you no know, real use in the game, at, unfortunately, right? So, D tier. This is the bottom of the barrel. The all these units like you just you're just never gonna use. That's why it says, be honest, you don't use them. So, I mean, you can make a fair argument, but are you gonna use them? Like, be honest with yourself. You gonna use him? I don't think you are. You're not gonna use Captain Meliodas. Maybe when you just first start the game. But now there's units nowadays that if you get right when you re-roll or something, you don't even really need him. So, yeah, not really that crazy or great at all. Then you have Halloween Meliodas, who's, yeah. Then Red Gallon. Red Gallon, his passive, I'm gonna be real. Had his passive been at 60%, I honestly think he might have been up in B tier. I really think he might have been up in B tier had his passive been at 60%. But since it's at a low 30, right, it's really just not that great at all. His first skill has shatter, but it's only single uh, target. He can remove buffs. Keep that in mind. I will give him that. 
he can actually remove buffs. Meaning, since he's red, you could sort of use him against green um, assault melee, in all honesty. But the problem is, he just has low stats. Although, he was buffed as well. Monspeed, Gloxinia, Gallon, and I forget the other unit, they were buffed. Within the recent uh, patch notes for JP, they were buffed, so keep that in mind. But I still don't think that saves him. Um, it's just it's just not that crazy their commandments to both gallons commandments were made to counter uh gother keep that in mind as well right they were made to counter gother um but nowadays it's just not great uh, he's just honestly he's probably a little worse i mean yeah see this is this is hard because you could literally put him here and then red red gallon here but I don't know. I'm going to leave him here. I think blue would just see more usage. But, well, I mean, let me know in the comments what you guys think uh, What you guys think about them, right? Red Monspeed, no. Unfortunately, he's just bad. His passive sucks. <laughs> His passive's not going to save him from any ultimate. Maybe if it's a weak one, yeah. But the, the ultimates nowadays, he's just not going to survive. It's just unfortunate. He has a weak point AoE, but not very that strong you really have to build him up and you really don't want to build up red monspeed when green monspeed exists so there you go and then green galaxinia is very bad uh green galaxinia i'm pulling up the galaxinias because they're just not cr like great at all i'm a i'm gonna be 100 with you guys they're just not that great. red galaxinia yes okay red galaxinia can is more viable now i will give him that green no green is no like, he just doesn't do much. This passive is not good. Increases the hero's defense-related stats by 5% for every ally. No, no, no. Increases attack-related stats by 5% when an ally dies. Mm, see, that's the problem. You have to have an ally die. Yes, you could get 15% at max. But you know what's, what's wrong with that? Even updated, his... Attack related stats suck. Get granted his his attack is pretty good, over five over five uh, thousand right five thousand three hundred without cosmetics. You ain't really doing much if your pierce rate is this low. You, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's just not gonna help you. Defense related stats they also are a little subpar. Three thousand three hundred. Really, resistance of twenty three percent. No, thank you. No, thank you. And then his commandment also sucks. Basically, if you use two skills and uh, one sitting, you get your attack-related stats decreased by 30%, which uh, kind of screws him over. It's just bad. It's just bad. He's just trash. You don't use him. You don't use any of these units. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. You don't be, You don't use any of those units. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for this tier list. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I think this tier list is actually really accurate. Um, if you, obviously I don't play JP, so you, if you guys play JP, you're going to know more than me, but from what I've seen from JP and my time of playing JP, it, this seems pretty accurate. You know what I mean? It does seem pretty accurate because Blue Zell, crazy, Red, uh, Derriere, crazy, all, obviously God tier units are all insane, and then all these units are pretty crazy, pretty good, but replaceable, just useful for the passive, basically, then you got, no, for these, the last two, uh, sections right but i think it's pretty accurate although you know if you guys have you know different opinions that's fine this is supposed to be an opinionated video <laughs> obviously but it is for fun so keep that in mind it is for fun i just want to put that out there but thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy consider leaving a like comment and subscribe for more grand cross content also be sure to join our discord we would love to have you but with that said i will see you all in the next video